And the hyoid bone, it's a complete dodge. The five Ds of evolution is dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Completely dodge answering where that transitional is series that is. not the what the observed data tells us occur occurred, that there were seven, seven million years ago um, uh, uh, potential common ancestors intermediate between humans and um, uh, humans and uh, the rest of the great apes, um, and that there was a steady progression um, of intermediate species from that point forward. Is that not what the um, what the fossil record shows? If you're claiming that it isn't through descent, then you're claiming that God created these intermediate species, let the other ones go extinct or whatever happened, that God has been continually creating these new species um, uh, through the time. And I don't even care if you um, if you um, sort of compress it all down to um, whatever ridiculously short interval you want. Um, these okay, species, Tony, your, your claim is now? that these species were created and then killed off by God, um, and no. but we shouldn't believe this evidence. Okay, I want equal time to respond. There's a lot there. Okay, a few points in our last couple minutes. Again, you're running, you're dodging very hard the genetic data that acts as discriminatory evidence against your position. You guys have the burden of proof. Secondly, you're making a lot of assertions based on so-called transitional fossils in, in the rock record, like the Australopithecines or Paranthropus or Homo habilis or whoever, you name it. I've got some slides here up on the screen, uh, James, my brother. And so many, even in your own camp, okay, you'll notice this. And there are major fossil record discontinuities that I would love to challenge you guys on in a second. But notice this, when it comes to Lucy's gait or the uh, postcranial material that apparently provides us evidence for Lucy walking upright in an in intermediate fashion. Even paleoanthropologists Conroy and Ponser point out that Lucy's lumbar and sacral vertebra were extraordinarily small, not suited for the heavy load bearing required for fully upright posture. That means she wasn't a habitual walker like us, more of a, a part-time biped, still adapted for climbing. In other words, close enough to resemble human locomotion superficially, but anatomically still a different kind altogether. In terms 100 of- 100% consistent with human evolution. No, because what we're showing- No, is, not no. We're showing variation that Lucy was- <laughs> Eric, we're showing that Lucy and the other Australopithecines was both different to extant apes like chimps and modern humans. But the, you the don't most important have an account for that. You just have to say, yeah, God made Australopithecines. No, be because there. what we look at, just like in genetics, we look at what's called genetic level discontinuities, like these massive differences that we see in, in Y chromosomes. Then we look at the fossil record and we look to fossil discontinuities and notice this one. We'll see how you guys can engage this before we move into closings. The only known hyoid bone, which is important for speech, of course, as we all know, from Australopithecus afarensis, the same species as Lucy, is chimp-like not human-like. It has the bola and air sac features of apes. Wow, so a 5 million year old hominin is slightly more closer to a more basal ape like a chimpanzee than a In a, a human. major trait. Wow. In we a major it. trait. And it turns it out Neanderthals says actually you, have the we same We don't know if they had speech at all. Nobody, okay, no me. evolutionary biologist said, oh yeah, Lucy's the missing link and she could talk. Okay, Nobody so ever said that. So where's the hyoid bone? None of this, so none of this, is that, of, this doesn't preclude dodging, evolution dodging, in dodging, any way. It's a hundred percent consistent with evolution. Where's the none of this is even a refutation. has hey, some traits that are a little bit more chimp-like than, you, than modern human-like. Great, exactly Gentlemen, what the evolution I do want to jump in. I do want to jump in just to give Donnie a chance to respond. He's talked more than anybody by far. Yeah, but both you, both you, Donnie, just. But both you and PhD Tony had raised an objection. So I do want to, before you guys go forward, I do want to give Donnie a chance to respond. I, to I at was least in the one middle of, of my sentence, and then he started talking while I was talking. Eric, okay. Let me just nonetheless, PhD Don, shut. Is that yeah. nonetheless? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, James. Okay, guys, we're excited. This is a debate. Like, it, there's no point in crying here. Let, let's let's have some fun. You guys have the burden of proof. I understand it's stressful. 
and the tension is high because you guys are failing to meet your burden of proof. And, and that's okay. We'll just leave it up to that's the audience. That's the point I mean, you wanted they, to they make? Are you done? Is it my turn now? <laughs> so my question to Tony, where's the transitional series from a creature like an Australopithecine, take Lucy, Australopithecus <laughs> afarensis, with a hyoid bone that is important for speech that is closer to chimps, okay, to a so-called transitional fossil or form in the human hominin line that now has a human-like hyoid bone built for speech. How do you answer this discontinuity? Go ahead. So, the, because the fossil record is to, is stochastic, right? Fossils only form under very specific conditions, um, and they're not that common. So, so you don't have you know, it. and this and this was a, a, and uh, you asked me a question. You now get to be quiet. You answered. You said you don't have it. No, um, that's that's not the. um, uh, I'll determine when I've finished answering. Thank you for your offer. Um, uh, This gets back to your point earlier about the uh, about the you know the unreliability or the incompleteness of the fossil record. We don't, and this is again a, a complete mischaracterization of science that we need absolute certainty, that we need ironclad evidence of every stage in a process. No, we have, we understand that all of our observations and all of our inferences, in fact, everything we think we know comes with uncertainty estimates. And accepting that there are uncertainty estimates is not a license for you to plow in and say, therefore, the entire body of human scientific knowledge is somehow invalid. That's not how anything works in science. So all of that to say he doesn't have the evidence. We're over 50 minutes. I'm pretty happy. These guys did not. What Donnie's doing here, everybody, is he, Donnie knows that we have the missing links. So now what Donnie's doing is looking for, for why are you interrupting me? I do want to hear from Planet Peterson. Tony responded, then what, Eric? You respond right after? He's on your team. I do want to, uh, it sounded, to be fair though, Donnie, it sounded like, I think Eric, as I understood, interpreted it as well thought that you were done with your point so eric wanted to jump in yeah no kidding so ahead. what donnie's doing is donnie knows the missing links are found so what donnie's doing is oh, looking for missing links within the missing links oh but if you don't know about the hyoid bone then that proves that proves something it doesn't yeah. this is exactly yeah. the tactic that he used with the y chromosome ignore the entire genome what about the Y chromosome is less than 2% of the genome. The whole genome is incontrovertibly supporting evidence of human chimp common ancestry. But what if I take a look at 2% of it and look at a fraction of the 2% of it that I don't like? Lucy is incontrovertibly a missing link between more basal uh, and not quite fully bipedal primates and humans. And Donnie knows that. So what if I point to One of its 206 bones, the hyoid. This would be like if Tony and I said, oh, well, you guys have to produce every single Bible that was ever written from the time when Jesus was alive to today. And if you don't have a continuation of every single scripture and manuscript and Bible from then to today, then the creation account is wrong because you don't even have all the data. It's It's completely dishonest. So are we out of time? Because 30 minutes ago, I said I wanted to talk to Matt to well, some things, Eric and then it got have the derailed. First closing, I'll have the quick final word because we're going. That wasn't closing. my closing. No, but and I, I asked James a listen, question. I know you're so excited. So shut up. But listen, okay, Eric, you're, you're telling I asked me to James shut up because you know you so sorry, I'm not so going to let you Johnny, do you right. you I, do right now? To, I do. Okay, so we can go a few more minutes for this topic that you want to discuss, Eric, because it is true that I, I think you, you have probably we've heard from you a bit less. So I do want to give you a chance. Uh, Donnie, it sounds like you had something you wanted to say. Did What was it, Donnie, that you had on your mind? Well, I, you know, I'm very happy with how this debate turned out. Eric misrepresented me a couple times. We do have closing statements. Line I'll make this one. really... Eric, calm down. I know you're excited. Okay. You believe you're related to a banana plant. I know that's an exciting... We share belief. genes with them, so I know that we are. That's okay. what it means to be related to okay. something so, is well, to well, share genes with it. And even you know it. So do you believe that you and a banana plant go back to a common ancestor? 
We yes. share genes. That's what it means to be related to something. Yeah, and you're going to extrapolate that to being related to the banana plant? The okay. I hate to do this. Well, but I, just... I want to finish my point. Eric, I know you're excited. Let me just finish my point. He misrepresented me. I didn't only focus on the Y chromosome. I described that even in similar sequences between humans and chimpanzees, there's massive differences in how those genes are regulated how they're expressed, differences in epigenetics. And the hyoid bone, it's a complete dodge. The five Ds of evolution is dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Completely dodge answering where that transitional series is. The hyoid bone is very important. We as humans actually can speak and we can express thoughts and ideas, okay? And it turns out Neanderthals had a hyoid bone just like us, consistent with the separate ancestry model. But these guys, for three minutes, just ramble on and it's all summed up in what? They don't have the evidence. Well, they didn't meet their burden of proof, and, and that's all I got to say.